Moving forward. My uh, life as an academic involves uh, traveling to interesting places, to conferences, to uh, workshops, to give lectures, to see exhibitions, to develop uh, collaborations, even to write books with people on topics like mobile lives. But of course, uh, my travel uh, is mirrors and patterns and is similar to the pattern of many other people. Sometimes it seems as if all the, all the world is on the move. The early retired international students, terrorists, members of diasporas, holidaymakers, business people, sports stars, asylum seekers, refugees, and so on. These and many others seem to find the contemporary world is their oyster, or at least their destiny. Crisscrossing the globe are the routeways of these many groups, intermittently encountering each other in transportation and communication hubs, searching out in real and electronic databases the next coach, message, plane, back of lorry, text, uh, train, bus, lift, uh, car, website and so on. The scale of this uh, travelling seems immense. Uh, there are uh, a billion uh, legal international arrivals each year, compared with 25 million in 1950. There are at least 4 million air passengers each day. At any one time, there are th between three and 400,000 people in flight above the United States, uh, equivalent to a, a city in the sky. Uh, there are many refugees. And today, uh, world citizens uh, move 23 billion kilometres. And if resource constraints don't get in the way, uh, it's predicted that by 2050, uh, 40 years or so, 40 years' time, it's predicted that figure will have increased fourfold to 106 billion. People don't necessarily spend more time travelling, but they're travelling faster. And uh, the amount of time people spend travelling seems to have remained more or less constant if you average it out across the world's population at about one hour or so a day. Also, people don't necessarily seem to make more journeys, but it's that when they do make journeys, they use powerful machines to make those journeys and thus travel much greater distances. This industry of uh, travel and tourism is uh, really the, the world's largest industry, whether you measure it by the size of the uh, employed population or the proportion of the global income that uh, it generates. And this, these sort of patterns of fast movement seems to seem to affect almost all countries around the world with uh, travel statistics now for about for at least 200 uh, countries, with most countries uh, receiving and sending significant numbers of travellers. An interesting uh, writer, Schievelbusch, a German scholar, overall concludes that for the 20th century uh, traveller, the world has become one large department store of countrysides and cities. Although, of course, there's huge variation in the degree to which any particular set of people can uh, voluntarily sample that department store on a regular basis. This sort of pattern of mainly, but not entirely, voluntary travel is the largest ever peaceful movement of people across borders. And even uh, with significant uh, interruptions in those uh, systems, uh, that has, uh, until very recently, not substantially uh, abated. So being physically mobile has been for rich uh, people, and even for some poorer people, a way of life around the globe. And at the, same, at the same time that people are moving, so, of course, materials are also on the move. 
uh, often carrying, carried by these moving people openly or inadvertently or illegally. And the multinational sourcing of different components of manufactured products also involves just-in-time delivery from around the world. So these uh, converging mobile machines appear to be transforming many aspects of economic and social life that are, in a sense, on the move or away from home. And there are, in, a, in this sort of mobile world, uh, many complex connections between physical travel, these forms of physical travel, and modes of communication forming new fluid patterns, often difficult to pin down to stabilise. And some people say these physical changes appear to be dematerialising connections as people, machines, images, information, power, money, ideas and indeed risks are on the move, making and remaking connections at often rapid speed around the world. So in all of this, issues of movement, of too little movement for some people, too much movement for others, or the wrong sort of movement, or movement at the wrong time, become more central to many people's lives and to the operations of uh, both uh, small and large public, private and non-governmental organisations. And there are many issues here to do with mobility which have become centre stage. In response to these developments, many writers have begun to uh, mobilise a mobility's turn, a way of sort of thinking and analysing uh, these processes, uh, thinking through the character of economic, social and political relationships in the contemporary world. This mobility's turn is spreading in and through the social sciences, mobilising analyses that had historically been static, fixed and concerned with predominantly aspatial social structures. This mobility turn is post-disciplinary, sort of beyond the individual separate disciplines, and concerned with the multiple ways in which economic, social, political life is performed and organised through time and across many complex spaces. And that analyses of the complex ways that social relations are stretched across the globe are generating theories, research findings and methods that mobilise or are coming to assemble analyses of social order that are achieved in part on the move and contingently. Overall, these mobilities have been mainly a black box for the social sciences generally regarded as a sort of set of neutral te technologies that permit forms of economic, social and political life that need to be explained by more significant kinds of uh, causes. Uh, but um, to the extent to which transport and communications has been studied, they've often been placed in separate categories uh, with little interchange with the rest of the social science holiday making, walking, car driving, phoning and so on, have been, until rather recently, uh, ignored by the social sciences, although they are manifestly significant for people's everyday lives. And indeed that pe everyday lives, social institutions, social practices, all presuppose complex patterns of movement through time and across space. These mobilities also each presuppose uh, systems. Systems make possible movement. The systems provide uh, the anticipation that you can make the journey, that the message will arrive, that the parcel will get there, that the family group can meet up. Systems thus per permit predictable and relatively risk-free repetition of the movement in question. And in the contemporary world, obviously, there are many such systems, including ticketing, oil supplies, addresses, safety, protocols, uh, websites, money transfer systems, inclusive tour, and so on.
These are repetitive systems. They sort of keep the repetition going and they make it uh, seem natural to be able to make the journey, to be able to see your friends or family. For people to be able to move and for them in order to move objects and so on is to have access to these uh, relatively secure, regulated and risk-free systems. There were a number of systems uh, that have been significant and uh, one very striking growth of such systems occurred around 1840 uh, when the first railway uh, was, system was being uh, built in England. Uh, the first package tour took place in 1841, uh, the, the development of the first uh, national post system, the invention of photography in France and uh, then in England, and uh, the uh, first, railway, a first railway hotel, and also the first um, uh, system of steamships uh, crossing the Atlantic all took place in a, a one to two year period. So suddenly there were this astonishing series of mobility systems. And of course the 20th century saw many other mobility systems developing, including the car system, national telephone system, air power, high speed trains, uh, electricity, uh, modern urban systems, uh, mobile phones and so on. And as we move into the new century, there are a number of features of such systems. They're getting more and more complicated. They are made up of many elements and based upon an array of often specialised forms of expertise. They are increasingly interdependent with each other so that an individual journey presupposes a whole series of interdependent systems uh, working coherently together. Also, uh, certainly from the 1970s onward, those systems have become increasingly computer dependent uh, and particularly dependent upon specialist forms of uh, software. And finally, and kind of problematically, uh, many of these systems, because of their interdependence, are vulnerable to what have been called uh, normal accidents. Accidents that are almost certain to occur <coughs> from time to time given the ways in which <coughs> these um, systems are tightly locked in together. So uh, as people's patterns of lives have become more differentiated from each other, more distinct, so they at, paradoxically depend more and more on these systems, these systems working. So organising, meeting up with others, with fa family, friends, colleagues and so on, because those fa family, friends and colleagues are spatially distributed, so it requires more and more uh, coordination. And it requires coordination through these diverse systems that have to be working, have to be in place, that have to be uh, providing the anticipated uh, uh, anticipation that they will be functioning. So personalization and system dependence is a particular feature of the mobility turn.